Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this class as I promised I will actually do this isomorphism theorems. Okay. So, let us actually uh, briefly recall what we did uh, in the last class okay, that will help us actually uh, to get into this isomorphism theorems. Okay. Uh, so, we defined uh, what is called uh, quotient algebras uh, using these ideals. Okay. So, what is ideal? So, ideal is a subspace okay, a subspace satisfying the following property bracket x y should be inside i for all x in g and y in i. Okay. So, then once given ideal i inside g, so one can look at this quotient space. So, which is uh, all these translations of this i by elements of g. Okay. So, then we defined a Lie product using the Lie product of g, the bracket x plus i and uh, y plus i. So, this was defined to be the bracket x y plus i for all x y inside g. Okay. So, we saw that we verified this g modulo i is actually a Lie algebra with respect to this induced product and we also saw that this quotient map which we denoted by pi. So, which is actually from g to g modulo i given by x goes to x plus i this is actually a Lie homomorphism. So, since uh, this is a Lie homomorphism we also calculated the kernel, the kernel is obviously being kernel the ideal that we started with. Okay. So, we also proved one simple uh, fact. So, what is that fact? So, if j is another ideal okay, containing g. So, then we can talk about this j modulo i. So, which is a subspace of g modulo i. So, this is indeed ideal inside g modulo i. Okay. So, these are all the facts that uh, we already proved. So, now uh, what we will do? We will actually use all these facts and then prove our isomorphism theorems. Okay. So, you must have seen this isomorphism theorems in uh, various uh, different uh, uh, places. For example, in group theory you must have seen this isomorphism theorems, in ring theory and uh, even for the vector spaces uh, you must have seen. So, whenever you change this category of objects in of, of course, the algebraic objects these isomorphism theorems uh, will be applicable for them. And then you can actually use them to actually kind of say something about the quotient uh, that you actually produce. Uh, so, these isomorphism theorems are very, very important in identifying what will be the quotient algebras in general. Okay. So, uh, for this reason okay, I would like to go slowly and then explain you uh, what, are, what are these theorems and more or less what you have seen. Uh, in vector spaces okay, the same proofs will go through, but every time whenever the some maps or something makes sense you need to verify whether it is Lie algebra homomorphism and so on. Okay. So, once that verification is done okay, remaining thing will be obvious from the arguments that you see in uh, linear algebra. Okay. So, let us first start with this uh, first isomorphism theorem which is actually a fundamental theorem. Okay. So, this theorem is indeed a mother theorem for everything. Okay. There are three uh, theorems. Okay. This is the very first theorem. Using this theorem all other theorems can be obtained. So, what is this theorem about? This actually theorem says about what we can expect about the quotient algebra. So, if you start with uh, a Lie homomorphism. Okay. So, here is the first theorem. So, here is the statement. So, let g 1, g 2 be 2 Lie algebras over complex numbers okay. and let us say phi is actually a Lie homomorphism from g 1 to g 2. So, this is a homomorphism not just a C linear map this is actually a Lie homomorphism. So, then what we can prove, so we already verified for given homomorphism the kernel of phi is an ideal. Okay. 
So, so then so if this is the data, so then what we can conclude the kernel of phi must be an ideal inside G 1 and not only that this image of this phi okay, what is that this is those phi of x coming this x uh, coming from G 1. So, this set so this is a subalgebra of G 2. Okay. So, not only that moreover when you take this quotient by this kernel this G 1 modulo the kernel we know from uh, vector spaces that G 1 modulo the kernel must be isomorphic to G 2 as a vector sorry G 1 modulo the kernel must be isomorphic to the image phi as vector space. But now we are dealing with all this the Lee homomorphism and so on. So, in this category, so G1 model of the kernel will naturally become isomorphic to the image phi as Lee algebras. Okay. So, what does this mean? There will be a natural quotient map from G1 model of the kernel phi onto this image phi, which will be isomorphism. Okay. So, now uh, we will prove this okay. all we need to do is we just uh, need to actually construct this quotient map okay, natural induced map and then after that uh, we need to verify. Okay. So, more or less once we know what is the natural map it is easy to verify that will be bijective uh, isomorphism. Okay. So, let us uh, construct that quotient map and then verify the details. So, what is the natural map? Let us let me call it phi tilde. So, the phi tilde, so these two things are I am actually skipping the kernel phi being ideal, which we have already verified, and it is not hard to verify image phi is actually a subalgebra because uh, phi is a Lee homomorphism. Uh, phi of bracket x y will be equal to bracket phi of x phi of y because of that it immediately implies image phi is actually a subalgebra. So, subspace is obvious because image of a subspace must be subspace. So, this fact is also I am just leaving it. Now, we will just focus on the quotient map and then we will try to prove that is actually a bijective homomorphism. So, what is the quotient map uh, natural uh, induced map. So, this is G 1 modulo the kernel phi to image phi we are going to define this map. So, what is this map? Obviously, phi 1 tilde sorry phi 1 phi tilde of x plus kernel phi you define it to be just phi of x. Okay. So, that is the natural uh, induced map from G 1 mo modulo the kernel phi to image phi okay, which is sitting inside G 2. So, this map is well defined. So, that you must have seen in uh, first question linear algebra or it is not that uh, hard to verify this map is well defined. So, let us verify. So, if you take two cosets representatives call it x and y then we know that. So, this will imply x minus y should be inside kernel phi. But this will imply that phi of x minus y must be 0. So, that means phi of x must be equal to phi of y. Okay. So, this says whenever you start with two representations from one coset, the images are equal. So, that means this phi tilde must be well defined. And you can also trace back these steps if phi of x equal to phi of y, then that would imply phi of x minus y equal to 0 and that would imply x minus y is in the kernel phi and that would imply uh, the cosets corresponding to x and y are same. So, that means this this one uh, thing proves okay, that phi tilde is well defined and bijective because we have actually restricted ourselves to image of phi okay we don't care about this g2 so the map is already surjective now this star implies this map is injective so it is bijective 
So, now you have bijective map and it is not hard to prove it is a linear map okay, that is already must have verified in the linear algebra course. So, I will just leave it as exercise. So, now you have bijective uh, linear map which is invertible linear map. Okay. So, now all we need to verify you have two Lie algebras one is on the left side another one is on the right, right side. So, if you verify this linear map is actually Lie algebra homomorphism then we are done. Okay. So, let us verify this map is Lie algebra homomorphism. So, you start with uh, two elements x y inside g 1. Okay. So, that means we are looking at uh, uh, the cosets okay, the bracket x plus i y plus i. So, now what we need to prove? We need to prove that uh, this should be equal to phi of bracket x plus y y plus i should be equal to bracket phi tilde of x plus y and uh, phi tilde of y plus i. Okay. So, what does it mean? You just rewrite this in terms of uh, the maps. So, this is nothing but phi of x and this is nothing but phi of y on the right side, but on the left side this is just phi tilde of bracket x y plus i nothing more. But by definition what is phi tilde of bracket x y plus i, so which is nothing but phi of bracket x y. Okay. But uh, phi is actually Lie algebra homomorphism to begin with. So, phi of bracket x y will become phi of x phi of y bracket. So, that means we verified that uh, phi tilde is an is a Lie homomorphism. Okay. So, this is what we wanted to verify. So, this is same as this. Okay. So, now this implies phi tilde is a bijective homomorphism. So, that means it is an isomorphism. Okay. So, this is actually a very good method to identify what will be your quotient uh, Lie algebra. So, the quotient the Lie algebra as long as you can establish uh, this uh, uh, Lie homomorphism from G 1 to some known Lie algebra and if you can actually identify the kernel with the ideal that you start with, then you can identify uh, this quotient with that sub algebra of that uh, known algebra. Okay. So, that is how one can identify the quotient. So, for example, we have uh, this odd map okay, the adjoint map from G to G L G. Okay. See this G is to begin with abstract Lie algebra. Okay. So, this is an abstract Lie algebra. But what we have on the right side is, is actually more concrete Lie algebra. What I mean by concrete? This is actually uh, G is a vector space. So, if you know the dimension so, this is the general linear Lie algebra, it is a very particular example. Okay. So, you can do computations everything in this uh, GLG, but uh, for abstract Lie algebra we do not know how to do computations, okay. but here we can do the computation using the commutator brackets. So, that is what I mean by concrete Lie algebra, okay. this is general linear okay, Lie algebra. So, suppose this G if it becomes isomorphic to some subalgebra of GLG then we can actually do lots of computations. Uh, so, that will be useful, but the thing is uh, it is not uh, always true. Okay. Actually it is true for finite dimensional uh, Lie algebra for complex numbers. So, but uh, but anyway it is not true in general for any Lie algebra that uh, G will be G can be like uh, embedded inside some general linear Lie algebra. Okay. But here in this uh, particular uh, map which is like a God given map for us this is the adjoint map. So, this adjoint map actually kind of uh, embeds G modulo the kernel of adjoint map, but what is the kernel of adjoint map? 
the kernel of this adjoint map it is those x and g such that add x is 0, but add x is 0 means what add x is 0 on g. So, that means this is uh, those x and g such that uh, x bracket x y is 0 for all y and g. Okay. So, this is a very special uh, ideal inside uh, your uh, your Lie algebra which is called the center. So, the center of G. Okay. So, this uh, uh, if you take this adjoint map the kernel of that adjoint map is the center. Okay. And what one can actually prove immediately using the first isomorphism theorem this G modulo the center usually the center we will denote it by Z of G. Okay. So, this is the definition of the center. If you go modulo this center then this is sits inside okay. this notation means injective map. Okay. Sits inside G L of G. So, modulo the center uh, you can actually embed any of this uh, any this Lie algebra inside this general linear Lie algebra, but here we are actually talking about very particular general linear Lie algebra. Okay. So, here I will recall what is called Ados theorem if I get time uh, later uh, during the course then I will actually give you a, give a proof of this Ados theorem, but I do not want to promise anything now. So, what is this Ados theorem says? If you start with uh, finite dimensional Lie algebra over complex numbers, then there exist okay, n in n such that this G can be embedded inside G L n of C. Okay. So, that means any so, all these subalgebras of G L n of C they are called uh, linear Lie algebras. Okay. So, they you this Ados theorem proves any abstract finite dimensional Lie algebra can be realized as linear subalgebra of some general linear Lie algebra. So, why you want to do this? Because here we can do very, very explicit calculations. So, here very explicit calculations are possible. Okay. So, here this is just abstract Lie algebra. So, we do not know like what we are doing. So, that is why this Ados theorem is actually very, very important thing, but anyway let I will just state it here and then like uh, we will see later whether we can prove or not during the course. So, here uh, yeah. So, now uh, we will see a class of Lie algebras. So, for which the center will be always 0. Okay. So, that class is called uh, semi simple Lie algebras. Okay. Semi simple Lie algebras. So, we will actually uh, give the definition of semi simple Lie algebras later in this course, but this for this class one knows that uh, center of of this semi simple Lie algebras always 0. So, that means if you use this add map, this add map will be always injective. Okay. So, that is always uh, gives you embedding inside GLG for this particular semi simple Lie algebras, but anyway we will we'll come to that later. Uh, just I wanted to point out this. Okay. So, now uh, we will go back to our uh, isomorphism theorems and then see okay, what, what other isomorphism theorem says, but before that let me just uh, give you one other example. Okay. For example, what I can do I can take this G L and C and then we can actually take this trace map. Okay. So, what is this trace map does? Okay, you take x and then you send it to trace of x. And it is not hard to see this is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism. 
Why? Because on the right side you have one dimensional space, so it must be abelian and the least structure that I have already explained that is the abelian structure. But anyway on the left side you have a commutator bracket, but if you take a trace of any commutator bracket that will be 0 okay? because of that uh, this uh, uh, may map trace okay, is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism. Then what is the kernel of this trace map? The kernel of this trace map is nothing but those x in G L and C such that trace of x is 0, so which is nothing but S L and C. Okay. So, then using the first isomorphism theorem, we see that this G L and C modulo S L and C is nothing but isomorphic to this one dimensional abelian algebra C. Okay. So, this is uh, example 2. We will see later some more examples, but anyway we will stop with this particular example. So now what I want to do, I want to actually uh, prove this second isomorphism theorem, okay. this is the theorem 2. So this is all can be written as part of one theorem, but anyway I am just calling it theorem 2. So now what it says, this is actually tells about uh, uh, if we start with two ideals i and j, then there are various uh, uh, algebras ideals that can be constru con constructed and then this theorem actually gives you relationship between these obvious algebras and, and the quotient algebras. Okay. Let us now start with i and j both are ideals inside G. Okay. Then we have already seen that i plus j is an ideal. Now you can actually take i plus j now go modulo j. Okay. So, we will actually uh, prove that. So, that means what j is an ideal inside. Okay. So, then so let me write it as a part of the part of the theorem. So, then j is an ideal inside i plus j and i intersection j that is also ideal inside i and moreover okay, we have so, we can talk about the quotient now i plus j modulo j. So, that must be isomorphic to i modulo i intersection j. Okay. So, this is the main part of the theorem. Okay. It is not hard to prove that uh, j is uh, ideal inside i plus j okay. that I just leave it to you to check because j is already ideal in g. So, it must be ideal in i plus j. So, that is obvious and similarly i intersection j will be ideal in i. Okay. Both are easy to verify. So, this part I will just leave it to you. Now, I will just check only that i plus j modulo j is isomorphic to i modulo i intersection j. So, how do I prove this? Uh, so, basically you start defining a map. So, you have this map from i to i modulo i intersection j. Okay, what is this map? You can take x and then send it to x plus i intersection j. There is no harm. This is a quotient map. So now, what do you do? You can also like define this uh, another map. So from i plus j to this i, you just uh, define kind of projection. Okay. Maybe actually I can uh, do the other way that will be easier. Mainly we need to use this uh, first isomorphism theorem. Okay. So, you define from i to i plus j mod j. What is the map? You take x, you just send it to x plus j and this is a well defined map. Why? Be because if x plus j uh, is equal to so what do we need to verify this is just obviously well defined okay there is nothing to verify so this is a well defined map this is actually a c linear map that is also obvious to verify and this is actually lie algebra homomorphism so that is also obvious because p of xy is nothing but bracket xy plus j which is nothing but x plus j y plus j 
So, that means this is phi of x phi of y. Okay. So, that verifies that this is Lie algebra homomorphism. Okay. Since uh, the elements of i plus j looks like x plus y uh, for some x in i and y plus y in j. So, if you take some typical element inside uh, uh, this i plus j modulo j, then you can see that this is same as x plus j. Why? Because y is in j since y is in j. So, that implies phi is surjective. So, there is no uh, need to actually there is nothing to check. So, this is a surjectively algebra homomorphism. Now, what is the kernel? So, the kernel if you can identify then the i modulo the kernel phi will be isomorphic to because the map is surjective i plus j modulo j. Okay. But the kernel if you look at it this is those x in i such that phi of x is 0, but what it is those x in i such that phi of x is x plus j which is 0 means that should be equal to j. So, that is just those x in i such that x is in j. So, that is nothing but i intersection j. So, by computing very explicitly the kernel we see that i modulo i intersection j is isomorphic to i plus j modulo j. Okay. So, this is uh, somewhat uh, immediate from the first isomorphism theorem. So, now let us uh, look at this uh, third isomorphism theorem. Again uh, this is actually relates uh, ideals, okay. but it is actually kind of uh, second degree uh, construction. So, the first uh, construction is the quotient. Now, we can talk about quotient of quotients. Okay. So, one wants to understand what will happen if we do quotient of quotients. But uh, this uh, third isomorphism theorem says the quotient of quotients will be again a quotient. Okay. We will not actually get anything new if we do this quotient of quotients. Okay. So, let us see what we really get. So, we take i, j, they are ideals inside g. Okay. This is the theorem 3 and then you assume that i is contained in g. Okay. So, now what we can talk about? So, we can talk about the following quotients. This uh, g modulo i, so that is actually a quotient algebra. We just uh, saw as an from our previous uh, results, this is actually uh, j modulo i will be a subspace of g modulo i, but we proved that it is indeed an ideal inside g modulo i. Okay. So, this is the setting let such that. So, then we have this. Now, furthermore, okay, moreover what we can do? We can construct this g modulo i modulo j modulo i. Okay. So, this is what I call quotient of quotient, but indeed what happens? This quotient of quotient becomes isomorphic to just uh, g modulo j. Okay. So, this is just a quotient, we are not getting anything new. Okay, it is in some sense this i and i gets cancelled, okay. you, can, you can remember that way, but this is what one gets. Again to prove this uh, what we do, we just construct uh, one uh, uh, linear uh, yeah, Lie algebra homomorphism uh, from uh, g modulo i to g modulo j. So, construct like let me call it uh, some f Lie algebra homomorphism, okay, maybe surjective, okay, surjective. So, then if you say the kernel of f is j modulo i, 
So, then we are done, then we are done using first isomorphism theorem. Okay, so, that is what we will do. So, then what how do you construct f? So, there is a natural map that is what you take, you take g modulo i 2 g modulo j. So, what is the map here? It is x plus i, you just simply send it to x plus j. Okay. So, only thing we need to verify whether this map is well defined or not. Okay. So, that is easy to verify because if x plus i is same as x dash plus i that will imply that x minus x dash is in i, but i is containing i is contained in j. So, that will imply x minus x dash is in j, but that will imply x plus j must be equal to x dash plus j. So, because of this we get uh, f of x plus i is same as f of x dash plus i. Okay. So, that says it is well defined. So, now let us see uh, once it is well defined I will leave it to you to check this will actually define uh, C linear map and Lie algebra homomorphism. Indeed, there is nothing to check only only important thing to check is uh, it is well defined all remaining thing will follow from like uh, the way we defined. Okay. So, now let, let me just compute the kernel and then convince you that uh, the kernel is indeed uh, j modulo i. So, what is the kernel? The kernel is those x plus i such that when you apply x plus i then that must be 0, okay. but what it is? This is those x plus i such that this x plus i which is uh, the image is nothing but x plus j. So, that x plus j should be equal to j. So, that means what? This is those x plus i such that x is in j. So, that is just j modulo i. Okay. So, it is immediate computation that the kernel of f is nothing but j modulo i. So, that means uh, the g modulo i modulo the kernel will be isomorphic to g modulo i. This is obviously subjective because given any x plus j you have x plus i as a pre image. So, so that implies that g modulo i the modulo the kernel which is j modulo i is isomorphic to g modulo j. Okay. So, this is actually kind of uh, uh, ensures that you do not need to go like uh, quotient of quotient and so on. Okay. This procedure somewhat complete once you take the quotient. So, there is no iteration, okay. you will not get anything new out of it. Okay, so, the important thing is like one should uh, cleverly use these uh, theorems okay, that is uh, really important. Okay. Uh, for example, I will just tell you like uh, the way one, one uses in practice. So, what we want to do, okay, suppose you, you are given ideal i and then uh, the Lie algebra g. Okay, let us say this is given. So, what we want to do? We want to identify what is g modulo i. Okay. So, g modulo i uh, quotient algebra is defined abstractly, but it is important to actually understand very explicitly what it is. Okay. Sometimes that helps concretely if we can actually identify it with something then it will it will help. So, because uh, quotient is like very very tricky thing, okay. there are many ways to like define quotient. Yeah, sorry, the, that means like you can start with any ideal and then define quotient, but unless you actually identify it with something else uh, that is uh, somewhat uh, handleable, then, then there is no point in working with quotient. Okay. Abstract uh, way it is good, but concrete identification somewhat helps. But how do you concretely identify with something? So, find another known algebra, call it g dash and look for this, this map f which is a Lie homomorphism 
which is from g to g dash such that the kernel of f becomes i. Okay. So, that will imply g modulo this i is embedded inside. Okay. So, this is isomorphism which is set inside g dash. Okay. So, I am not claiming that given i you will be able to always find this g dash such that which looks nice uh, such that this g modulo i can be embedded in g dash. But if you are able to do that then, then computations about all this g mod i becomes somewhat easier. Okay. Assuming that this g dash is actually somewhat well known algebra. Okay, so, I will uh, stop here and then I will actually uh, continue uh, in the next lecture with uh, some other constructions like direct sums and so on. Okay, we will uh, then once we develop enough uh, these basics, uh, we will move on to some particular classes of Lie algebra called soluble Lie algebra, nilpotent Lie algebras, semi simple Lie algebras and then see uh, some of this some of the basic properties of them and then we will use those important informations to study the structure theory of semi simple algebras okay i'll stop here